Thompson. Check. Check. Butler. Check. Butler. 36C-076. Check. 35C-031. Tally. Out of 830 for mayor, Timothy Butler continues to be <laughs> a total of the party's giving them another good licking. Thompson's headquarters have conceded a Butler victory. How does it feel to be mayor, Tim? To tell the truth, I never thought I'd be elected. With the party behind you? How could you miss? You seem quite confident in the party. Politics is another type of the show business. We picked you because, as a young attorney, you had color. That Spencer case alone proved to me that you were a showman. Believe it or not, I took Mrs. Spencer's case against the mortgage loan syndicate because she had no money, and they were trying to take her property. That property was everything she had in the world. Well, got a lot of publicity, made you a public character. The champion of the underdog. That's what the people like. <coughs> Hello? Hello, Gorman? It's Regan. Hello, Regan. Yeah, how are you? Well, we won. Yeah. Thompson's headquarters just phoned, admitting defeat. Yeah, we just got it over the radio. Pretty sweet, eh? I'll say so. Oh, um, have you seen Butler? Yeah, Tim's up here with me now. Are you coming up? No. No, I've got to pay off some of the boys. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. Miss Regan, why don't you tell me that Thompson's manager just phoned our headquarters admitting defeat. You know, it wouldn't break my heart if I didn't see too much of Regan. Regan? He's one of the best party managers in the country. He knows where all the bodies in the state are buried and who buried them. Uh, just a professional politician. Well, now, where do you think this country would be without politicians? Do you think that the average citizen would take time off to help run the country? There are many who would. Ah! All the average citizen thinks about is making money. He's got no time for politics. He'd rather let the other fellow worry about running the country. As long as he has a place to sleep and something to eat. Well, I'll admit it looks that way at times. It's always that way. As long as the party keeps its nose clean and doesn't get too rough, the average citizen doesn't care what happens to the government. I have a feeling they're about ready to wake up. Well, you'll soon get rid of feeling sorry for a bunch of sheep. Maybe. Well, anyway, my boy, there's one thing you can brag about. You're the youngest mayor ever elected to office in this city. To say nothing of the best looking. Hello, Sylvia. I thought you were tired of election returns. Oh, I've been listening to them in my room. And I want to be the first to congratulate his honor, Timothy Butler, the choice of the people. Thanks. Choice of the people? Ha! <laughs> the old machine makes them choose right every time. Sounds as though looks and youth had little to do with it, Sylvia. It was the old machine. Pay no attention to Dad. His very soul is constructed on party politics. Well, I'd like to see anybody elected in this city without the party. Excuse me, Mr. Butler. I hear the statement you dictated. Uh, let me look at those. It's awfully nice of you to come out here and work tonight, Ellen. And allow me to tell you that you are now secretary to his honor the mayor. Oh, you were elected? Mm-hmm. I knew you'd win. Daddy. Huh? Wait a minute. Tim. Yes? I'd tone this down a bit if I were you. You don't have to make any promises now. You're elected. This stuff about cleaning up the town is all right before election. But uh, don't make any more promises. You might have to live up to them. Oh, what if I do? Oh, well, a gesture two is all right, good, even necessary. But we can't afford to antagonize the men who put us into office. However, I'll talk that over with you some other time. Now, what's on your mind? How would you like to have a mayor for a son-in-law? Huh? I've seen this coming for some time. Fits right in line with the party. Haven't I already one son-in-law in the Senate? Well, if that's all, Mr. Butler, I think I'll be going. Why, why, certainly. You must be tired. I'll drop you off myself. I really should be going, too. Oh, don't go yet, Tim. I'll send Miss Manning in with George. There's no need for anyone to take me. My car's outside. 
I'll see you at the office tomorrow, Mr. Butler. Yes. Uh, you needn't drop in until afternoon, Ellen. Thank you. Good night, dear. And thanks a lot. Good night. Come on, Afri, you're making me nervous. Don't be walking behind me. Come on. Hey, we gotta get sober, eh? You get me? Good. Let's have a drink, huh? What's that, Ellen? A new expression? No, merely an opinion. Well, what are you doing, Charlie, outside of drinking? Why, well, you're not insinuating that uh, I'm a drinker, are you? No insinuation. But I can honestly say I think you're one of the worst drinkers I know. <laughs> and for years, I've been thinking I'm one of the best. Best or worst? I still don't ever remember having seen you sober. Never. Never use that word sober. You know, for years, I've gone to bed with that mortal fear that I might awaken sober. And not recognize most of my friends. Being sober is not all that'll change your recognition of things. Try going into politics. Listen, gal, one of the first lessons for a secretary is not to fall in love with the boss. No, sir, let him fall in love with you. That's not my squawk. Tim's too smart a man to sell out to a bunch of dirty politicians. Well, if all this is dirt, little Charlie's gonna duck that Saturday night bed. Don't worry about it, Charlie. See you in the morgue. You see me in the... Hey, Pat. Hey, slug. Turn it off before you break it, will you? Now, get your camera set up back here. Wait a minute now. Now wait. Now wait. I got it. 